Testing, testing. Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. My name is Alex. I'll be your host for the next half hour consultation. It's free, of course. If you'd like to hear more, you can visit us on Patreon. These are available. It's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. You could also follow on Instagram. That's the Corporate Cowboys with a Z at the end. Um... If you want to shoot us a donation, by all means, there are a couple of donation links floating around. You want to write in, do that. That's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95741. Now, let's go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> there was a, um, a, a request for advice. This is coming off of Reddit. That's r slash career advice. I feel like that's a great place to uh, find questions. You might find, a, you might find a question you already have that somebody else already had answered or has gotten answered in the past. that has been asked and answered, right, for my legal friends. Now, today's question is a, a simple question, and I'm not going to say an easy question, but it's a simple question. And it's a, it's a, it's a common question among young people, among younger people who feel like they lack a sense of direction, a sense of orientation, where it is they see their professional career going, whether to continue in school after graduating uh, the K through 12 system or even the K through 16 system, because there are some who bounce right from high school into a four-year higher education program and and then graduate there and are still clueless about what to do in life. So today's question is exactly on that. It's it's asking, and it is uh, through r slash career advice, what would you do if you just finished high school but you don't? want to go to a university. And this one looks rather new, actually. There are only two comments on it. I'm going to read those comments first, and then I'll give you my take. I have spoken on this topic before in a previous episode. I believe it was last season. No, no. It could have even been the second season. The second season of the podcast. <clears throat> if you are interested... Go take a look at that, but but I'll admit it may be buried in one of those uh, one hour plus episodes, <clears throat> which is why I'm now keeping the episodes down to 30 minute consultations and answering specific questions, questions that I could answer creatively, that I can riff on, that I could build and idealize and, and innovate in real time, because as you think and talk about a topic, uh, a subject, um, new ideas might bubble up. So the first comment here says, join the military. And that's pretty fucking straightforward, right? If you have no sense of direction, if you lack organization or structure, I think the military is one of those places that inculcate you with the sense of being a follower, of being a good order taker, being a a um, a soldier, essentially. I'm not going to go as far as saying a drone, but you're trained for battle and combat and or uh, auxiliary support, right? So you're still an individual. You're capable of thinking individually. You're just trained. You're just trained and it's regimental in nature. So... It's very uniform, very standardized. Uh, their second suggestion here is saying joining a coding boot camp. So you learn how to code. Coding software, I believe, is uh, the future for many individuals who take to it naturally. And, uh, and obviously, it can be very lucrative, always dependent on what area, what industry it is that you get into. Because just knowing how to code might open doors right? But knowing what to code would get you places. So if you're considering that, just know what it is you're looking, you're looking forward into. If I had 
this uh, young person, if I had this young person sitting in front of me today, I'd have a battery of questions for them. I'd, I'd, I would want to ask what interests they do have, what uh, subjects they excelled at in high school, whether or not they found high school even interesting, that, that form of education, that manner in which they are educated, whether or not they would even consider going to another institution that was you know, somewhat high school in nature. And that might be why they don't want to go to a university because it's just glorified high school. Maybe to them high school was a shitty four years and they don't want to do another four to uh, end up with a, a paper degree, right? They also recommend learning a trade. Obviously, obviously trades will never go out of style and they always pay rather well. Specifically, um... Well, especially those trades that are that are highest in demand in bigger cities, uh, such as plumbing, such as construction and welding. Um, in some areas, I, I I think landscaping is also very very lucrative, very profitable. You don't have to be, um, you don't have to discount the status of someone who does landscaping to understand that while it, it, it might be hard and that in some days backbreaking work, it also pays very well. Uh, or it says here, start a business. Now, if they have no clue what it is they want to do, maybe they just don't want to go to university, but they have an idea of what they want to do, right? Then starting a business might be a good option for them. Um, I might recommend doing research. Obviously, you always want to research. Do your own industry research or market research on your own to find what's in demand out there as far as products or services before venturing and taking the risk on a business, before going all in on a business. But, but if you are young, if you're fresh out of high school, you have, you have room to fail. You have some slack. You may have a safety net with your parents, with your house. Uh, you know, your living expenses, your cost of living is maybe relatively low if you're living with family, if you're staying with family. So starting a business might not be a bad, uh, a bad idea, though you might want to consult with your parents. You may want to engage a uh, business attorney to find whether or not uh, you might run into issues as far as compliance. I know you can't run a business out of like apartments or condos or, or you know, uh, certain family homes in certain cities or states. So definitely want to tap in with a lawyer, some type of legal advisor. If you need help, if you need help on how to research it yourself, yo, hit me up. I could, I could potentially walk you through it. I won't, you know, I'm not going to charge lawyerly rates unless you want me to um, represent you in some kind of action or, or just do the work for you. Hey, I might be open to that, right? We might be open to that and have resources to help you accomplish what it is you're trying to accomplish. So by all means, reach out to us. Um, they continue. The comment here says, I'd probably start by traveling the world. <laughs> By traveling the world and taking up odd jobs for a year or so, that'll give you way more confidence, skills, and life experience than most degrees. Also, you can go to school slash learn without having to pursue a degree or spend years and tens of thousands to gain skills. That's actually a good idea. If, if you want to become a sort of, not a vagabond, right, but a... Um, What's the what's the word? A troubadour? No. Is it voyeur? I think voyeur is straight up adult entertainment. Um. Is it vagabond? No, it's not that. A nomad. There you go. A nomad. A tr uh, a tradesman. A journeyman. There you go. A nomad or a journeyman, depending on what it is that you're gonna specialize in. You could take up odd jobs doing the one thing, but you got to be good at it. You have to be good at it in order to charge a fair amount, right? You can make good money doing this. If you if you hone a reputation, you carry business cards, you could set up your own little website to have folks give testimonials and whatnot, fam, 
you can set yourself up right to do it. Now, I, as far as just traveling the world and getting by on odd jobs, it really depends what odd jobs uh, you're going to be doing. A lot of what you're going to find if you travel the world a lot are going to be manual jobs, right? Because you just graduated high school. You might not have a lot of life experience. So, so expect to work with your hands a lot, a lot of sweeping, a lot of cleaning, a lot of organizing, stocking, shelving, moving, uh, transporting, organizing, adjusting, right? Don't don't expect to do a lot of calculating, a lot of data entry, any management as far as executive decision making. No, don't don't expect any of that. But but I will admit if it is public facing, if it's public facing, you're at least interacting with clients and customers, right? If you're taking orders, uh, if, if you're if you're serving, if you're I don't know, if you're a waiter or a waitress, um, that that will definitely make you more outgoing, more uh, outspoken, better better socialization. You'll be able to socialize better. You'll have improved social skills because uh, it, th- the need to work, obviously the need to survive, the need to eat and, and live, and then work for it through your job actually transfers that 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 small sense of desperation becomes hunger. It fuels the hustle and clients see that customers see that, that you're a hungry person, that you're out to go, that you're a go getter, that you're out to play for keeps, that you're out to, to take the world by the horns, essentially, right? It, it builds confidence. It might build some ego. If you grow to be really good at what you do right then you can ascend in those positions even whatever odd job it might be you could become a supervisor of sorts you could become a manager of sorts depending on how long you stick around for and uh, that also helps build confidence and it translates into other jobs down the line now what happened to me is that after high school, I also went and began working. I, I was off and on going to community college, and I chose not to stick around, right? Actually, I got, I caught a record and dropped out for a little bit, and so I worked. So I worked in a, in a restaurant, and I was a... Now, I started as a lowly crew member. I was very entry-level, and I mean everything in, in on, on the West Coast in California is entry-level, essentially. It's a right-to-work state, so you could be a fucking CEO and get knocked down the next day. Like, it doesn't fucking matter, right? But after high school, I took a couple of years, and, and I worked my way up this restaurant chain. It's very popular, very uh, Tex-Mex, very E. coli-friendly around... 2000 no 2013 2014 (laughs) it was in the news go look it up i'm leaving you clues if you want to um and i ascended uh, up to a a supervisor manager i was gonna take on the store i was going to take on the store and i was working uh shoulder to shoulder with corporate at the time my corporate manager and um and it was after leaving that position, then I figured I had to return to school. And and I knew what to go to school for. Imagine that. So I knew what I wanted to do returning to school. And it put me through law school. It put me on the path to law school. And so here I am years later, years later, and and I'm happy with the time I took away from my education to go find my purpose not find myself quote unquote because a lot of a lot of bitches and and uh, both male and female a lot of bitches they go to uh to college or university and blow their parents money or take on a fuck ton of loans to go quote unquote find themselves and that's just to go party and binge drink and fuck and catch stds and all this other bullshit and then whine and then whine and complain uh to their professors oh they can't they can't make assignments because fucking life, life is fucking steamrolling them, is snowballing right now. But you know, every every other night they're out in the club, blowing loan money like like it's the two thousands, like it's Y two K out here. <laughs> well, 
Um, taking some time away from school, right? Distance makes the fucking brain grow fonder also, right? So you take some time away from education and before you know it, you actually find yourself yearning to fucking learn something, right? In that time that I was away from school after high school, after I graduated high school and I was away from just the education system and I was putting in work at this restaurant and, and earning my stripes. And, and again, because I worked every odd job in that restaurant, I became very outgoing, very, very friendly with the clients, with the customers, with, with those that, with those patrons that came in to be serviced by us. And, uh, I became a manager. I became a, a really capable manager and I've got I've got reviews. I've got references if y'all want to hear them. Um, by all means. But I became a very competent professional. I, I began. I began a journey. A professional journey. In order to develop an identity. A, a skill set that I could transfer anywhere that I went to. And translate onto any work that I done. That's essentially what I've what I've done. I mean, I've I <laughs> funny funny enough is that you you yearn for education so much is that a couple of years outside of school and you find those around you don't have those ambitions of of bettering themselves or maybe they do but they don't know how to pursue them and they're stuck at a certain wavelength at at, at a certain they're stuck in a certain phase in their life, right? I found myself in the library, right? So it, even, even working eight, 10 hours a day, sometimes 12 after work, I'd, I'd find myself in the library on my days off. I'd be in the library, checking out books, reading up on, on how to improve as a intrapersonal speaker, how to negotiate, how to make friends, how to make, uh, how to mitigate making enemies, how to advance in employment, what skills are needed for management, that sort of thing. I'm sure you'll find it. I'm sure you'll find yourself and more than likely won't be in school taking on additional loans. So if you don't want to go to a university, go get a job, literally any job. It could be Fast food, right? And mine wasn't fast food. Mine was quote unquote quick service. So again, I'm just dropping you more clues. You can find out for yourself and if you want. We could set up. A, we could set up a a one on one, personal one on one, and of course, we can converse. We can converse about where about the path that I took because I didn't go straight into university either, right? But if you would like to compare, if you need additional advice. I suggest you reach out. This, uh, the second comment on here says, I would look for, I'd look at certifications, at licenses or an AA degree if you don't want four years of college. Life is not worth having some, hold on, what? Life is not worth having some disposable income? Hmm. I don't know, coming from a username that says not rich, just careless. That's questionable. That's questionable advice. Life is not worth having some disposable income. I feel like disposable income takes a bad gets a bad rap, right? Because why why would any income be disposable? You want income to be uh investable. You you want income to be reinvestable. You want you want to have retained income <laughs> to be able to build something better and, and grow as a person to grow as a professional yes i did catch myself stuttering and i'll be working on that to grow as a person to grow as a professional this person is saying to go look at certifications and licenses now if this young person knows, again, if this young person knows what it is they want to be doing after high school, maybe it is a trade. Maybe it requires some type of certification, some type of license. There are programs that you don't need to go to university for. You could become, say, a massage therapist, 
say you could become um, uh, some type of other professional service like a like a barber. Um, you could become a window washer that doesn't require any special licenses, I don't believe. Then when you start getting into like uh, dry cleaning or, or car detailing, or or if you go into automotive technology, like if you're wrenching on cars, uh, if you, if you work as a mechanic, I'm sorry, if you're working as a mechanic or you want to start your own mobile shop, I believe you do need some special licenses to be in compliance with uh, city or county ordinances because uh, you would be handling hazardous waste at some point in your career. As far as like oil disposal and antifreeze and refrigerants like for the air conditioning. Um, But life not worth having disposable income. I feel like that is a hot take. Maybe this person just has fucking millions and he's one of those. They are one of those types. They're one of those types to say like, oh, you know, money. Life isn't all about having money. But if they didn't have it, they, you know, they'd be shitting themselves because, I don't know, maybe they were set up with a trust fund or maybe they just became rich and forgot how to wash dishes. But again, that might be an odd job to take. Start as a fucking dishwasher, move up. I know folks who've done that and they've, they've owned and managed businesses later on, having never forgotten where they came from. It's, it's all a matter of remembering. It's all a matter of of continuous progress, continuous progress, right? Um, I, I believe I've said this before, but I've, I've had to train 18, 19 year olds fresh out of high school and they didn't know how to do a fucking lick of work. They didn't know how to clean, how to wipe off a table, what the proper technique was to not have it look like somebody just, just licked it clean, like fucking wiped it, wiped it like they wiped their fucking ass probably. How to uh, how to sweep, how to mop, how to wa- how to clean bathrooms, how to use a knife in the kitchen. Yeah, I mean these these young <laughs> these young motherfuckers. Again, young <sighs> men and women, young men and young women, they're like entering the workforce knowing less, right? They might be book smart, but they might not be street smart. And what's funny now is that street smart also means, you know, home economics, just just simple tasks around the house. I, and, and, and book smart is just being even more dumbed down. All they know how to do is, uh, what's it called? Eat, eat hot chips, charge their phone and lie, yo. Like, <laughs> this is, it's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. I remember actually, I went to, I graduated from my undergrad at the University of California, Davis. And um, I remember the first, the orientation when I went and uh, my parents had came along, I invited them and we were separated. I, as a student, went off on a different tour of the campus of the school. It's a, it's a nice campus. It's a beautiful campus. They've got a lot of nice facilities and installations. Uh, the parents went off on their own, I guess, in orientation for their young students. And a r- reminder that I was out for about five years. So I was over the average age and uh, I was I was a late, uh, older reentry student. Now, when we came back together, this was around like lunchtime, parents and students came back together and we got to, you know, a fellowship a little bit with everybody else and and enjoy lunch and meet one another. My parents, my parents had then told me that in this parental orientation, the orator, the presenter advised the parents like if, as if it were some critical piece of information, they advised the parents, insisted on teaching their students, on teaching their kids how to wash their clothes, how to, how to do laundry, right? How to cook basic food items, how to, how to cook eggs, how to cook rice, how to cook beans, right? How to cook meat and, and how to clean, and how to clean, dude. Like, like the parents haven't been already doing that 
at the house. And I'm like, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm baffled because since I was a young blood, like since, since I was a young kid, since I was a young gun coming up, my parents always put me to work. I was always busy doing something, right? Always busy doing something. And if I wasn't, because if I wasn't, I was getting in trouble. I, I, I could admit to that. And if I wasn't kept busy, I was getting in trouble. And uh, so hearing about this really, really changed a perspective where higher education doesn't mean being educated. It's just, again, you're just being trained. You're just being trained to memorize for the exam, but you don't walk away with with that quote unquote well-rounded education like schools and institutions and colleges and universities claim to be promoting claim to be uh, inculcating into their students it's not it's not happening it's not happening that comes from life experience and if it's not something you're being taught at home in the house go get an odd job Go to a restaurant, start as a busboy, start as a dishwasher, move your way up, expect to be trained, ask how to do something. I know another young colleague who, uh, who, who's got it pretty well made off, right? They were born into a, a family where the family has a, a small business, and so they, they never went, uh, for lack of anything they, they they never went for wanting anything then they never wanted for anything right they were given a lot of a lot of what it is they got in life i'm not going to say spoiled to the extent that you know they're just fucking bastards they're they understand and were also brought up to work in the workplace and now want to branch out but what's funny, what's ironic is that they won't, um, they don't want to improve on the position that they have with the family business. I mean, they, they're not pursuing a, a business degree. They're, they're not pursuing some type of economics or statistics degree. Uh, no, no, they went uh, soft science. They went social sciences for undergrad and um, reached out to me. Yes, I recognize I'm saying um a lot. They reached out to me and they asked how to get started working on cars because they they know that I work on cars and asked where do they start? What kind of tools to start buying? And I said, don't. I said I advise them not to. I really did because they just graduated university, right? So they went the K through 12 route and then from K through 12 and through uh 12 through 16, right? So they're still relatively young. They don't have a whole lot of life experience. They've got more than most, but they don't have life experience, right? They might be um, a better capable at surviving than those who don't know how to do their laundry or cook an egg or wash dishes. But as far as growing into their own person, that's going to take some work because the university doesn't do that for you. University just pats you on the back and gives you gold stars for memorizing facts and uh, passing exams. Now, I advise them if they were, if they want to pursue working on cars, to start low, start at your local shop. You've got shops in town. Any town has shops. Every town has shops. Start as a shop hand, right? And because they're in a particular situation where they're not actually wanting for anything, right? They could potentially start as just a shop hand, as an internship, right? They could ask for minimum wage, even that, right? If, if even, just minimum wage. And they could help around the shop. Obviously, they'd have to do additional research and homework on their own time. They'd have to learn what the tool names are. They'd have to learn what the car types are the differences between american and european and japanese they they'd have to learn what the what the essentials to to gasoline cars are and electric cars are in order to be able to communicate at least 
with those that are on the shop floor. With those individuals who are working on the shop floor. Now, having told them this, I mean, they're, I don't know if I motivated them or if I de demotivated them, unmotivated them, <laughs> if I encouraged or discouraged them. But I did tell them that it's, it's going to be difficult because you will be learning a brand new thing that you did not know how to do before. So I'm going to close by saying this. If you're going to learn something brand new that you've never done before, right? Especially even, even just doing a small odd job that you might look down on somebody else for doing and on the, on the West Coast in California, uh, like landscaping. I brought up landscaping, right? That really brings me back to, to th believing that, oh, landscape, uh, landscaping was like a lower tier job for like lower class or those of lower status. And no, that's a, that's a misbelief. That's a misconception because a lot of knowledge, a lot of intelligence goes into being able to elaborate a craft and yet have it look so simple, have it appear to be so simple. But even then, you got landscapers out here that are one or five or 10 or 15 people crews and they run their own business. So not only do they know how to do landscaping, they're a fucking business. They're an, they're an enterprise, entrepreneurs, without having gone to university and still be very successful, have their own family, have their own homes, have weekends off. Imagine that. You don't have to go to university to have weekends off, yo. <laughs> Anyways. Have yourself a, uh, a nice Tuesday. I'll catch you on the flip side. It's about 30 minutes, man. I'm, I'm going to cut it right there. Because the question was so broad. And because I don't have the capability of real-time interaction with them, I can't. I can't ask follow-up questions. I can't really do a proper intake. Though if I could, I would. And if you ever need help with your career, you need some guidance, you need some advice, you just need somebody to hear you out, to uh, provide you with, with solutions, with possible solutions, right? I'm not going to prescribe anything to you. But if you need, if you would like options if you would like another perspective on your situation on your current position in life by all means reach out to us we'd love to help we're in the business of business we would like to lead leaders and create more leaders so with that i'll let you go have yourself a nice week i'll catch you next time